Are you stressed because your listing isn't selling? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Rosemary Lewis, your real estate bestie, and today I am going to give you tips on how to market your listings that just aren't moving fast enough. But before we get into it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and that way, every time I post a video, you will know all about it. And while you're at it, go ahead, show us some love, give us a thumbs up. Yay, you have all of these listings, but there's one problem they are starting to sit much longer than you and your seller would prefer. So what do you do about it? So first of all, let me just tell you besties that you are not alone. Actually, me and my girl, Amber Dorsey, one of my real life real estate besties, just had this conversation a couple of days ago with the fact that even in our market, we are in DFW where it is super progressive, but we are seeing longer market times and we're having to be more creative with getting our listing sold. So first of all, you're not alone. I don't want you to panic, but I definitely want to give you some tips on how to get these listings sold, how to move them. Now here is the very first tip is that, and this actually starts before you even take the listing, it is setting realistic expectations with your sellers. My new favorite meme, I'm gonna show you a picture of it, is this thing, it says that, you know, buyers think we're in 2008, sellers think we're in 2022, and every agent thinks they're on Selling Sunset, and baby, that could not be more accurate. And I get it, and, and literally, I get it from the perspective of sellers, is that they saw all of the craziness happen around them just 24 months ago. So it's hard to really understand or adapt to what's happening in market, but this is your responsibility as the real estate agent. And I'm telling you, setting these realistic expectations up front is going to make all the difference in the world. And I know that you are competing for listings, but lying to people and over-promising and under-delivering is going to set you up for frustration and failure and possibly have you out here paying for and marketing a listing that you cannot get sold. So what type of expectations do you need to set? I'm happy you asked. Number one, what is the expectation of market time, okay? I don't care how beautiful the house is. I don't care, you know, all of these different things. And of course, you are going to work to get it sold as quickly as possible, but the data is the data, okay? And the data is going to help drive the expectation. So instead of you telling your sellers, hey, this is what I think I can do, I want you to set the realistic expectation based on what the numbers say. So when you are going to a listing appointment, make sure that you are very clear on what the market time, the days on market are. But I want you to even go a step further. I want you to reach out to those agents who maybe have something pending or under contract or even those active listings that haven't moved yet and get an idea from them like, hey, what did your showing activity look like? What type of buyers? Like what are some of the common feedback loops that you're getting with people looking at your properties? Because the same buyers who may be offered or came to see or passed on their home will likely be the same ones that are going to be looking at your listing and being able to help the seller understand the expectations of the buyers that their home will attract will make a world of difference. So definitely set the proper expectations. Also pricing, okay? I literally just offered on a house for one of my buyers and no lie y'all, the seller was overpriced about a hundred thousand dollars. Now the seller definitely had the paperwork to back up all of the different upgrades and things that they did in the property. But at the end of the day, they actually over improved it and it's a waste of their time. It's a waste of their agent's time because the agent didn't have an honest conversation about what the home is actually worth in today's market and what it would appraise out to. So when you are pricing a property, make sure that you're not just looking at sold comps, but again, you're looking at what are the trends that you're seeing with the homes that are selling, right? What percentage of list price versus sales price are they selling at? Are there any seller concessions? Like you need to really 
do a little bit of research so again your seller knows exactly going into selling their home exactly what they likely will expect I know some of you are nervous, right? Like, oh, if I tell them all of these things, then they might choose to go with someone else. I let my sellers know right up front, hey, like, here's the thing. There might be an agent who's willing to sell you a dream and not be upfront with you, but that's not me because I want to share with you exactly what you can expect in market. And remember, a couple podcasts back, I'm gonna link it here. We talked about the eight Ds of real estate, and I don't care what market you're in, There are certain reasons that sellers are just going to have to sell. So make sure you are clear on their motivation, clear on why they're needing to sell so that when you're having these very, very honest expectation setting conversations, you're bringing them back to the result that's going to happen on the other end of getting their home sold. Now, let's talk about some creative things that you can do even after the home's been on the market for a while, you're trying to you know, drum up more traffic for the listing, definitely, definitely, definitely look at pricing again. We are definitely living in times where in a matter of two weeks, 30 days, like where you price your listing, if there has been market activity that has changed, if there are new comps that have sold at a different price, you may have to adjust. So don't just set the price in the beginning and not pay attention to what's happening in that market, but you need to be looking weekly and updating your sellers weekly so that if you all need to make some adjustments to price, that you will do that accordingly, okay? Now, here's another thing. Some people say that open houses are dead. I actually feel the exact opposite. A lot of my current buyers are starting their search with open houses. And as a matter of fact, I wrote an offer yesterday for a house that my clients saw at an open house a month ago, okay? So they went and they saw this house at an open house. Then we went out and we started showing and they wanted to go back to that house. But if it wouldn't have been open a month ago, then we would not have written an offer on it. So as much exposure as you can get to your listing, hosting open houses, making sure that it is available so that people can see it and tour it, I am going to encourage you to do that, okay? And then while we're even talking about that, let me tell you something that I have been doing recently. Speaking of Selling Sunset, I have been doing more agent to agent networking with my listings to get more agents in the door, but you wanna be a little bit creative on how you do it. Now, first let's talk about why you wanna build rapport and get agents in the door. Because guess what? They are shopping with tons of buyers, okay? So they are seeing what's available in the area, what's available in the price point, and they're going to be able to give you some professional feedback that you know, you may not have been privy to, right? Or you may even be biased because you think your listing is beautiful or whatever. Getting agents in the door to give you feedback is going to be monumental. But then also, listen, we want to give agents an opportunity to to come and tour and making it easy for them so that they can share your listings within their networks, on their social media and all that stuff. I recently hosted, I didn't call it a broker's open, go with me here. I called it a content day for one of my listings. And this is the way that I positioned it to the real estate agents that I invited. I said, hey, I know that sometimes it can be kind of tricky to find a beautiful home that you can go and you can take pictures and you can do your educational content videos. But guess what? I am checking that box off for you. I ordered a charcuterie board. I brought tripods. I was on hand to help coach them through some content. And guess what? Not only did I help solve a problem for the agents, right? I helped them with creating some content, walking through a beautiful home, but also they started to showcase my listing on their open house, right? It put it on their radar. And very soon after the home was under contract. So think outside of the box on different things that you can do with that nature. Here's another thing, neighborhoods, working within the neighborhoods and getting to know the neighbors and inviting them to a special activity, a special viewing is another way to get eyeballs on the listing. Because guess what? When a home goes for sale, 
you do know that it creates some anxiety between the neighbors, right? Especially the direct neighbors, like the people who are like three to the right and left and three across the front, they are wondering who is going to come and live next to us. So knock on those doors, invite them over to come and tour the house and then give them literature. Who do you know? Like help me help you. Let's hand pick your next neighbor. And when you do that, not only are you creating an opportunity to expand your network and get to know the neighbors and possibly have a listing, but there are definitely neighbors who know someone who's interested or maybe interested in moving into the neighborhood. And then this is the last one I'm gonna get you. I'm not gonna give you all my secrets, right? You gotta join me for Bestie Accelerator Coaching for that. But here is the last one. Make sure that you are doing some sorts of reverse prospecting. Now, if you don't know what reverse prospecting is, I'm gonna encourage you to have a conversation with your broker or your local board, but it's going to give you an opportunity to reach out to agents that definitely have clients that are looking for homes that meet your listings exact criteria. Now, I don't want you to just send a text message, but you need to get in these agents' faces. So are you going to actually pick up the phone and call them? Can you send them a video? Can you highlight the really, really important features of your home and let them know how you stand out differently than other listings that, you know, honestly, weren't the best fit. They just may have missed yours. So going direct to agents, right? And, and not just agents that you know, but agents who actually have buyers shopping in the area. I guarantee you, if nothing else, your seller is going to say, okay, she did not just slap this home on the MLS praying that somebody just comes by and takes a look at it, which I get it. A couple years ago, that's all you had to do. But now we have to actually market the property. Okay. Tell the story of the home and get it in front of the right buyer. And I guarantee you that you try some of these things, you will get more traction to your listings. Now, if you made it to the end of this video and you are not subscribed to my channel, listen, what are you doing with your life? Go ahead and subscribe because here at Real Estate Bestie, we are all about helping support you and growing your real estate business. And speaking of support, listen, join us in the Real Estate Bestie Facebook group. Head on over to rosemarylewis.com forward slash Facebook. And there you are going to be able to connect with besties all over the country who are there to help you, support you, give ideas, give tips. We problem solve together inside of that Facebook group. So make sure that you check it out.